Hi, this is Paul from the Tank Modeler channel uh, with my up and coming uh, build with Switcher in regards to the uh, Tiger One. He's doing the late uh, mid mid version uh, from Hobby Boss, and I'm doing the the early version from Tamiya, uh, which is the display model. As I said in the previous video, I've had this since 2001 ish is about then, and when it first came out, because that's what, when it was manufactured. And I did start the model a little bit and actually built the the, the actual metal work that built, that actually screws into the lower plastic hull of the Tiger One in this particular case. And I'm, I'm going to show you that in a minute anyway so that's no problem so I'll just go through this and I'm going to start with the instructions which is what uh, Switcher normally does so this is the basic kit and it's the early version and uh, and it says here I'm trying to think where it says here it says it's um, I'm going to I'm going to give you the model number later on but it is basically the display version and it's from the 116 big se series zero, uh, 03 uh, number that's the actual series number and 116 so Really nice kit. As I said, I built it and had work commitments when I started to build it, and I just stopped. And thankfully, I did because basically I wouldn't be doing this build now. So, that, and and I've got, learnt a lot more about building models since since 2001. So, and that's a good bit. Right. So here we go. So that's a quick look for the instructions. Won't go too too bad. Uh, when you open up, that's what I kept the instructions. The, these are the decals. Sorry. These are the decals you get with the kit. I shan't be building using these, I don't think, but I'm going to hang on to them just, just in case I change my mind, because I'm particularly going to build a particular tank commander's vehicle, and uh, from the from 1943-ish, and uh, and this this actual kit fits in quite nicely with that. It will need a slight mod in one or two areas, but not major stuff. Well, anyway, so basic instructions start off with the basic history of the vehicle, and it starts off with a, a, this bit here down through here. It's all about the Tiger One story, and of course, it's a lot bigger than what it is there, but this gives you an overview basically of what the actual uh, Tiger One story, uh, the Tiger Tank history of the Tiger One. Then it goes into the performance of the Tiger, and it's basically a 50 sun, uh, 57 ton vehicle. Um, would be regarded as a medium, I suppose, nowadays, but it was a heavy at the time. And of course, the King Arga 2 uh, actually went up to 70 tons, so you can see there was a big increase. There we go, anyway, so that's all the way down to there, and it gives you other languages as well, obviously. It mentions the Bovington Museum as well, and I think that's where they took most of the deep the actual measurements for this model. Right, here we go, turn it over. Usual thing. I hope you can see it in nicely. But basically, no, I didn't want to zoom in because when it comes to show you the other bits, it'd be a bit awkward. But anyway, basically, you get the tools you need, um, and there's two drills required: a 1.5 and a 2.5 uh, drill bit. Um, I've got that. There's no issues there, so that'll be okay when I come to that. And this is a book don't do. So one of them actually says, uh, uh, "Don't let your child eat parts from the model," which is pretty obvious anyway. Then we come over to the sub first scheme, which is unusual because they're normally there at the rear of Tamiya instructions, but uh, this one came out with it in the beginning. And this is Tunisia, uh, 1943. It's the first company of our uh, Panzer Battalion uh, 504, and basically it's it's actually the desert colour. And, and and they've got a TS number here or an XF number of XS X60. Uh, I won't be using Tamiya colours, so I'll be getting equivalents when I get round to my my model build. So that's that one, and it goes on. We'll do it like that. Next one is another one from Tunisia. This is the same company, first company again. Uh, vehicle number is four one the foot one four two. Obviously, that's the main difference between the two two vehicles really. Um, and that's it really, all they've got is the Balkan Croats and the, the the vehicle number on this one. Then we go down to this one, well, this one I think took part in the Kirsch because it's got the the Kirsch um, identification which is like a upside t, uh, t here, you can see that. Uh, they've actually sort of hidden it a little bit but basically it's like, it's, e it's either going to be, the, what is it, yeah it is, it's got this, here it is. It's much clearer on there, it's in white though. There it is basically, it's a basically a, a, a horizontal line with two verticals and, and that, that was the code used for the, the regiment in question. And this was a, an SS unit and the 8th company of the uh, Panzer Regiment 2 in Russia. And it was, it was an SS unit and that they actually had a hidden, they changed their main badges for the actual regiment into them to all symbols. One, there was one regiment at it with a single line and a single upright. So like a T upside down is a basic way to look at it. So that one there's got multiple colours, that's an XF60 with XF61 for the camouflage. Again, not sure about that whether I'll be doing it because I'm as I'm looking for a particular vehicle. 
uh, to, to build with a particular commander in question. There we go, so it goes on, so you've got three, and then there's a fourth colour, and this one's a TXF63, which I think is the, is the grey colour, and I think that's why they gave it a sort of a bluey tint here. And it looks quite nice, and if you was going to do that in a winter camouflage, the grey and the white would really show off really well. Anyway, so basically then it gets into the build, and applying decals it tells you what to do there. Um, gives you, it's not it's best read this before you actually build. Gives you a little indication is G, because there's, there's some grease for this, obviously, because it's a motorised unit. So you've got bits and pieces like that too. But we're not going to touch the grease, to be honest, because this is not going to be moving anywhere apart from uh, from the workbench to the to the cabinet. So there you go. And then it starts off number one, and I've done all this. This is a bit I've done. This is all metal work. I'm screwing it together. And these are the bits and parts you have to do. And um, this was to the tension pulley. This was a pulley, pulley that goes to the rear idler wheels, one on either side. And there's a screw underneath the rear of the vehicle that actually allows you to get put more tension on the tracks to get the tracks to more suit. The, the, the vehicle like it is on in the actual drawing. So it carries on there, and it goes over to two. Done all this as well, all these screws and that to actually put, put into this place all the way along, done all that. Done all this with number three as well. And done done this bit as well. Now this is the plastic hole, and you can see the actual sprue bits are in the bottom you had to cut out, and then this metal, metal bit drops into place there like it's showing you here, and it has to be screwed into place on into the hole. That's all been done by me as well. This is a bit of plastic, basically. So these bits were plastic, these here, had to be screwed into place. And you won't see them once you've got the sprockets in place, but they're screwed into place. And also these bits are actually glued into place onto there. And they cover the screws up that are there as well, as you can see, because it actually will cover it a bit. So that's been done as well. Then you move over to the next page. So we're up to number six now. And this was all to do with metal work. And these are the actual, the actual, um, the actual um, torus and bar suspensions and these these actually go the torus and bar goes into it and these are metal these little metal yokes go into the torus and bars a bit like if you watch uh, i think it's the uh, I'll, I'll put it in the, in the link below the suspension being done by uh, by the shop i'm trying to think of his name but it doesn't matter i will look, look at it he done the ad panther and um, and he shows you actually fixing those torus and bars but they're pretty straightforward it's pretty straightforward because you follow the instructions here and it's the same for all their torus and bar vehicles that the, uh, the ag panther that's come to come out uh, the king tiger's got the same sort of suspension all got similar suspensions because they're radio operative and you've got to have the suspension working so i've done all that i've done those two bits as well and uh, these bits done now these are the grommet grommets that go in there as well to hold it in place and, and basically that the screw underneath the vehicle is what you do the tensioning. So you'll see that when I get round to doing it, I'll mention it anyway. So there you go, I've done all that. Come over this side. Now I didn't this a bit I didn't do. I did all this and all this, putting the parts together, and did the tightening up as well. And I actually put these together, but I haven't put the machine gun into place, so that bit's got to go in there. So these bits are in place on my model. You'll see them on there, but they haven't got the, the ball melt because I've got plenty of time. Because this was just put on there, it clicked into place. So that's it. So that's more or less as far as I got. And then it gets over. Yeah, that's right, it's it. So basically, after that, this is laying in the model, clicked into place, but it's not actually glued, and that's all got to be done. So really, I got up to part 10. Or, sorry, part nine, and then after that, I've really got to start building. So, I'm building from this point on. So, there you go. And I didn't do that bit that says calls for the tracks to be put in place and, and the actual bar. Now, my the vehicle I'm going to do, I've noticed in the photograph of it, it didn't have this on the front. So, so it's, um, it's one of those things. So, I shan't be putting that one anyway. Right, there we go. So, from nine, so it goes on to there to actually fit in the glacier plate there and the mud guards. Now, the mud guards are maybe I'm going to leave them in situ uh, on the kit, but but um, what I'm going to have to do is just build the actual photo etch ones. And if I can get them to work perfectly and they look nice, I'll cut these off and replace them with the actual photo etch ones. Here's the road wheels being done and the tyres. Now, the tyres I will cut these bits out and pull these bits out, but I will paint the tyres up and weather them before I put the rubber tyres on. The rubber tyres will receive a bit of paint, an acrylic paint, of a, of a worn rubbery look, so it looks a bit sort of dated. There you go, so the weathering a bit on that will be done first. Then I'll put the tyres as and these look like, uh, yeah these are the metal ones, because I've got some metal ones to put together as well. These are the idler wheels and for the, for the idler wheels, and then this bit here is a sprocket going together, straightforward really, a screw holds it in place, then you cover it up with a bit of plastic to actually put the bolts on to actually cover the, the screw up. Really well thought out. 
Um, as you can see, this is all the bottom's got screws, and these will show when you lift it up and look over. These at the back ones, these are slightly down and lower. But what I'm thinking about doing is someone's ground them all off. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm thinking about just painting it all underneath of it and weathering it quite heavily underneath with a bit of mud on there, so it actually covers all these screws up. Because I don't once it's in in being built, I don't have to worry about that. So that's it. So for, for up to 14. As you can see. The actual screws and everything are actually inside, so you can, if you want to get, make sure you've got the right one, you lay it on there and you get it sorted. Uh, then it goes to talks about the tracks. Now the tracks are pretty good. Um, I don't know if I can get this a bit brighter. No, I can't touch it. Anyway, right. Anyway, but the tracks, these pins, metal pins, they're all in place. The tracks come in loops, and it tells you to remove two from the actual tra each track, and then 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 put them in or take or take more out if necessary. But basically, take two out and, and test fit. So that's good, and that's what the track should look like. And the adjusting screws at the back, and it's telling you tension adjustment screws, one so on either side. They actually work because I've actually tried it out. It does work. So that's what I'm going to be aiming to look like, something similar to that. Then we go talk on the back engine deck. Again, there's a lot of things here. There's the armoured shields for the exhaust ports. Now I've got some photo edge bits and pieces to go in with this, including the back mud guards uh, as well. So I'll be looking at that and building them up. And if I like them better, I'll replace the the, the, the kit parts with the photo edge. So that's that bit again coming around. And up to this, we're pulling about 18, and it's carrying on with the mud guards. And there they are. The plastic ones do look nice, I've seen them on there, they really do look the part, but if the plastic ones are better, the photo edge ones are better, that's what I'll be replacing it. Also get a photo edge one of these jacks, but again, like I said, if it, it can be replaced, if it doesn't look any different or any better, then I'll keep, keep stupid to kit part. Here's the um, air conditioners. Now, I may put one or two bullet holes in these because I've seen photographs with them in, and, and if I find the tank I'm going to build has got some, so I will do that as well. But it was in pretty good condition, the one I saw, just a bit grubby. So there you go. Um, so there you go, it comes on. I'm finishing off with the actual shrouds and putting these things back together. These the actual exhaust, these are the air conditioner box on the side. They've got a rubber pipe that joins up, so and um, so they, they will be in place later on. Again, they've got to be painted as well a little bit. So box, toolbox. I know there's a toolbox in the, in the photo wedge, which is going to be a lot, much more detailed than that because they have a holder. And then the toolbox that fits nicely. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna be at this. This is all gonna be an attempt of me to do that. So I will always hang on to the kit part just in case it all goes wrong, as they say. Right. So that's part twenty. Moving over. Then we've got the actual kit. See how much time we've got. We're down to sixteen minutes. Right. So we've got this is a bit the upper hole. We've got this reinforcer going over here. And some of this is to do with radio controlled stuff. So that will go in there because it is a reinforcing plate and holds the. The actual main hole topped on it quite and firm. There's places where screws go to attachments. We've got the these are the hatches. They look nice, but there's some photo etch extras for that, so I'll be looking at that. These bits of these cut there. I've already cut that bit out to test fit the turret earlier on, see how big it was when I was doing this years ago, I should say. And um, there you go, all the bits and pieces. Now some of the screws may not be needed. It all depends on what they're used for. So I will replace them and fill in holes. This is the engine plate. I've already put some, put it, uh, cut it out of the sprue and test fitted it, but these bits have got to be done. The screws are quite nice because they, they've got the thread on and that's what they should have. If you see the rear verco, they've got those up as well. So there you go. And that's how you fit it. I haven't got it permanently placed. I just I just put it there to see if it to, to make it look reasonable, see what it looked like. Here we go again, more screws. Now these screws actually hold it in place. So if they're flush, there might be a case I can screw them right in it and file them down or smooth them down and then fill them up so they're covered. If not, if they're not needed, because I'm going to glue this down to the top body, then what I'll do is that and then remove the screws and fill the holes. There you go. Then you go, there we're on to the lamp and the wooden block. I've got a wooden block in my um, Edward set, so I might be that would be replaced anyway. Headlight's got more detail to add to it from the kit. There's a latch for the engine room, engine uh, cover, which opens and closes. Sad really, because there's nothing in there to look at, and this we can get some a little bit of engine build up at some point. There you go. On with, these are the pipes I told you about. These are uh, rubber and connect onto the actual air cleaning system that goes into the engine. That was all eventually removed in the end, and uh, it would have only been used in the desert mainly. But um, they did have it on, in Russia for a little while. And here we go, finishing off the top of the body, and that's what it should look like when it's finished. And here you can see he's not very happy. If you look at the drawing, I've not, not done it. If I can hold it, I'm a bit of focus. He don't look very happy, does he? That bloke down here. No, why? Because he ain't got a turret on his tank yet. <laughs> Bad joke. Right, anyway, and it carries on to part 
uh, 28 and that's actually starting with the actual gun. Now this barrel's plastic. Now I've got a choice here. I can either glue this two parts together and actually smooth it down and make it nice and smooth and then I'll use a brass end cap which I've got available for it or I can actually use a metal one I'll show you in a minute or later on that I can actually replace it with. So I can do that. So there you go, that's finishing off the gun. Then you carry on with the turret and all the fixtures, fixing. There's going to be a lot of photo edge bits to come in this area here for the hatches. There's the dustbin one for the early, the early Tiger. And when you get to the to mid, it, it changes to the ones with the seventh, yeah, seventh periscopes. The bin, again, is a good... Uh, I can actually have it opening, uh, I believe, on the photo edge set. So that would be another replacement, possibly. And these are the um, smoke dischargers on the side of the vehicle. It had some running on the outside as well but uh, they're replaced with some photo edge and tubing as well, so we'll see what that happens. Here we go, carrying on. This is the loader stroke escape hatch on the turret. And go over there, and it's just fitting it to the turret, to the turret, to the body, and it's finished, and you get a crew member. I think you get a choice of two. That's the African version, and that's the what's name. So you've got two, two, two crew members, one, of, one from Africa and the other one from Europe. Two batteries going in there, mine's not going to be fitted, so that's it. There's the switch for switching on and off. I'm, I'm going to cut, take that out completely, I think, unscrew that, remove it, and fill that hole up, so that's no good. I won't be using that. And here we go, we've got the sprue, sprue um, uh, selection that you can actually go to, so you can find the parts easier, which is good, all the way through. And then you've got all your nuts and bolts and beezes all, all listed around here. Now, I know it's a long way down, but um, when, I, when I actually build it, uh, I'll explain it a bit more as I go through. But there's not too much to go when you think about it. And that's it. And that's the instructions. Well, I'll put that over there for now. And now I'm just going to show you the tank, that I've, the bit I've done. And I'm just going to lift it up. It's quite a big gun. I'm going to look, look at the camera. And you'll see what I mean by how big she is. And I think you can see the measurements down there, uh, up the top as well. Give you an idea. Um, this comes off. And that comes out because these have just been put together, like you can see. I just put it into when I was test fitting it before. But you can see what I've done. This is the adjustment bit, but it's adjusted from underneath. This is the switch, and I'm going to take that off because I don't think it's necessary because I'm never going to use it as a motorised vehicle and uh, cut this wire off and everything. But you need need the motor in, the gearbox and motor in, because in fact is that's what goes to the drive sprocket and gives it its, its actual drive shaft. So you do need that, and also this shaft that to go into here for the sprockets as well. Same principle. So there you go, but I'll just, just slide this back in. This is all loose. This is all clicked into place, and so you can see what I mean. It goes into there like that and slops into place. Once it's in place, I reckon glue would do this perfectly. Just clamp it in and glue it. That's why I wasn't thinking about using some of these screws, but even though they are self-tapped, but that would be covered up. This, this is the engine plate I talked about. That's the cover. It goes on there, and all I do really is just slide it underneath there and pull it back up and it sits in there nicely. But of course, it's got to be fitted and uh, it does work, but like I said, if you open it up, there's nothing there. Um, to give you an idea, this is my Yag Panther that I'm building, I'm still on the process with it. And it sort of get, if I put it up in the corner, you can see the sort of size difference we're talking about here. It's quite a big difference. I haven't done an update on that yet, but I will do. I've got a bit more to do before I do the update. Right, so that's it. Now, now we'll talk about the turret and there she is. There we go. It goes on so, uh, like that. And slides in. So it gives you an idea of the size of it. I mean, we're talking about it, and you can't even, I wouldn't be able to get the gun in place. So there you go. I'm going to take that off now. Don't need that there. There's quite a bit of work to do. Right. Move that over there. I'm going to move the, sh the chassis out of the way. But I can show you what I mean by. I'll just take that out. It doesn't matter. If I show you what I mean by the underneath, that's what I've done so far. And you can see what I mean by the switch and the bits and pieces underneath. So that's all been done. That's, that's as far as I've got. And, and to believe it or not, that was quite a quick job to do that. So there you go. So let's talk about some of the parts. Now I'm going to put that back in there. Right. Let's go here. As you can see, that bit I showed you earlier on there was cut away from here. So that, that's the bits that was on there. So that was my test fitting of the, the rear. So there you go. So that's a few bits on that sprue. That's to do with the air cleaner again, like a, the, the actual air purifier. Put them up there for a moment. There you go. Right, here we go then. This might have to be two videos, but run through it quickly if I can. Here we go then. This is the air cleaners, and there's the uh, shields for the exhausts, uh, small exhausts. They're very thin plate armor, very plate, and some other bits and pieces, uh, hatch hooks. 
This, this looks like periscope holders for the driver's commander cap bits. There's the actual cat, the latches for the for the actual drivers and, and loaders uh, machine gun position, radio operators position. I'll put this back in here. There you go. Put that up there. And I'll only take one out because these two are the same. And there's the engine armor plate. There's the side shields, being replaced by Photowish anyway. Handles, quite a nice size. There's the old the light, excuse me. Muzzle brake, we're not going to be using it, and the barrel. And there's the um, the cleaners, and they look quite nice actually, them ones there. I mean, drill them out and make them a bit thinner, they'd be lovely. There you go, we've got two of those. Put that way. I'll just get through this a bit quicker because uh, I don't want to go into another video if I can help it. And here we go. That's a spare track for the front, which I most probably won't be using. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. There's the... Um, that, oh, of course you can't see it's so good. Here we go. I'll take them out anyway then. There you go. Track bits and pieces. That's a bit for the trap load on the tracks. There's the bits that haven't been put on. So you can see I haven't done a great deal. There's an the aerial mount. I've got a, a brass area to go on that. Another air cleaning thing for the on the engine deck. A bit for the commander's body to sit on, I presume, in the turret, but I just really won't be using that. And more air cleaners bits, so it's got the other parts of the air cleaners. And you can see bits of it, there's just the air bits are actually dead ends, that can be drilled out to make it look a bit more uh, realistic. And and the tools, now the tools are not too bad, but with cl metal class, all the class taken off, they will be re really a lot better then. Put that bit away. Right, there. Right. Bits to do with the main gun and the loader's hatch on the roof and the uh, emergency hatch exit from the rear and loading loader's hatch as well. Loading shell loading hatch and parts of the gun mantle as well for the front of the turret. There you go, and a seat for inside the turret. Just there. Sorry about the rush. We've got six minutes, so don't take, take too long. And this will be the last bit of the plastic, I think. I'm not going to take it out but to speed up. You can see it's different shrouds. You've got different shrouds here. And you've also got the loader, the drivers and loaders hatches tops, more vents. The cables look really nice, but I've got some metal cables to replace that. And the actual, this actual um, um, jack looks really good. So to, might be able to photo extra details from the photo exit. So we see how we go. Um, there's the block, there's the driver's um, part of the driver's, uh, driver's hatch, and various shovels and tools. There you go, and a bit more over here. They look really nice, but with some decent tool holders, they'd be lovely. So that's that bit. Next, next, I'm not one undo this because you can just see what it is. It's all the wheels, and as you can see, this hasn't even been undone, so all the wheels have got to be done. There you go, so that's that. And Two sets of lovely tracks, we've got five minutes left. Two sets of lovely tracks, again you've got to take two links out and it, of both of these, but just by removing the pin that's on that end, you can see it, I can most probably get it out, but I, I'm not going to, no I'm not going to try, but a bit of pair of pliers to get that out. And that's easy, and they look nice. The only thing that's wrong with these tracks is they haven't got no uh, holes in the guide horns. Now I could sit here and drill them all out, but I'm not sure whether it's worth the bother, but if, it, if, I, fit, if I get impatient or decide to do something like silly, that would be the silly bit I do. There you go, so that's the tracks. Now, the last bit, and I think I showed this in the last video, is the extra bits I've got here. And if I do that, and first thing is all those, the cables, but they've got the actual uh, gun cleaning rods. These are them. And these these actually, we've got brass ends to, uh, to, to join them together to make them long so they go through the, the actual uh, barrel of the gun for cleaning. So they're, they're clean. Extra ca caps, I'm rushing it a bit, sorry about that. German clamps of class, I bought this as an extra set a long time ago, that one. Aerial, I bought, did bought this a few weeks ago, I think this one, the aerial, because I did really want a nice one, and it's the only thing I bought recently, and that's the 2CM antenna, 2 meter antenna for the back. Here's the cable. There's all the rod, brass rods I need for bits and pieces. And there's lots of bits for the actual track to be on the side of the turret by the looks of it. Be interesting to see if that is there. And loads of 
floater bits with a PE there, and you've got mechanical bits and pieces. There you go. Oh, there's the cable bits for the cable. See what I mean? You can see the bit goes on the cable. Shovel. So there's a lot of things here, tools, and bits and pieces. There yeah, they're all the different bits, the, the actual, you can see the grills. There's a load of stuff there to actually build, along with that bit of wood, wood for the block. So as you can see, there's quite a bit to do, and um, I'm looking forward to starting this one go. I might put the two cables in there, so there you go. So that is the that is the actual detail set you, you could get, and I think you can still get it, I think you still can, but anyway, but it's 16K01, and it's the Tiger One Astoff E811 early version, which is what this vehicle is. And that's that. The extra bits and pieces, all I'm going to do is let's show you inside the box. They've got the mount, there's the bin, you can add photo extra, use photo extra detail more. There's a different gun mount because you get a choice of two. Um, there's the hatch. I took that off at some point just to test it onto barrel. Very nice, there's not much detail in there, but there will be later. And um, now I'm not going to show that yet. That's the that gives away what I'm build, what, what one I'm going to build, and and there's the barrel. There's the barrel with it, so that's a nice barrel, and there it comes off. But of course, I've got the brass muzzle brake, and if it, if the kit barrel when I clean it up with a muzzle brake, brass muzzle brake looks better, I'll use that. So, but this will this will fit in it perfectly. All the rubber tyres, as you can see, loads of bolts and screws. There's plates in there, bits and pieces. All the bit, loads of oils and greases to actually do do the job in regards to uh, oiling it if you're going to use it. So there you go. So I'm going to put the turret back into there. And really, that is it really for this kit. So I'm going to put it all back in its box and wait for wait for, get ready for the start uh, state that switcher decides on because I'm letting switcher lead on that as well. So there you go. So that that's basically the one we'll be doing. I'll just put this back in here. Oops, there you go. Excuse me. There you go then. So I think I'll call that quits then. And that's the end of this video. Uh, basically showing you what was in the box and how far I got with the, to the build before we I put it away for, uh, well, nearly 15 years. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next video to do with this build. Thank you. Bye.